So last week, Elon Musk cryptically posted, you'll thank me later. And now we know exactly what he was referring to. Warren Redlich wrote, this is not about buying stock, this is about SpaceX. Elon confirmed that saying correct, and today he revealed that that is the name of the new watership to transport spaceship from Starbase to Cape Canaveral. So this is a large deck barge. And SpaceX has done this type of conversion of autonomous drone ships for recovering rocket boosters, but this time it'll be for ship transport. And here's a photo to show how it compares in size to Blue Origin's Jacqueline and of course a shortfall of Gravitas. So thank you to the space engineer for mocking that up. And so that's just one more puzzle piece completed that SpaceX will need in order to fly Starship from Florida, which is coming soon. Speaking of Starship, we're looking at Flight 11 probably happening in October at this point, and Flight 11 will be the last of the V2 ships. This entire year has been Starship V2, and they're ready to move it along to Starship V3. And SpaceX was still dealing with some legal matters regarding Flight 1 and was recently in the news for an update on that lawsuit. So a U.S. District Court judge has just dismissed a lawsuit brought by conservation groups challenging the FAA's approval of SpaceX's expanded rocket launch operations in Boca Chica, Texas. So the ruling issued on Monday found the FAA had met its obligations in reviewing the potential environmental effects of Starship launches. Which, as Matthew Totora shares on X, if SpaceX were to lose this, they would have had to conduct a new programmatic environmental assessment for the Starship program, which safe to say would have greatly delayed the program. This is a very big win for SpaceX, lots of time and money spent on this outcome. And he's right, this would avoid a costly redo. The court's partial summary judgment validates the FAA's 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, for Starship launches from Boca Chica, essentially rejecting claims by groups like the Center for Biological Diversity that made this lawsuit that debris from the 2023 Flight 1 test scattering over six miles and other impacts violated the National Environmental Policy Act. A new assessment could have cost five to $10 million and taken 18 to 24 months, which would have stalled the entire program. So it's really, really great news and it's kind of under the radar, but this is a pretty big deal. And hopefully this also sets a precedent against future challenges. So yay, the up to 25 flights from Starbase will still happen, they won't be delayed. And by confirming that the FAA adequately addressed key concerns like light pollution on wildlife, the ruling clears the path for hopefully uninterrupted Starship development. And then finally, I wanna talk about a little snafu with the new Cygnus XL spacecraft, that's a Northrop Grumman spacecraft. So this was recently launched to deliver cargo and scientific experiments up to the ISS, and now that delivery has been delayed. So there seems to be more than one issue with the Cygnus spacecraft lately. If you guys remember a few months ago, CRS-22 was damaged beyond repair due to a ground incident, something happened during transportation. So this most recent mission was launched by SpaceX on a Falcon 9, but it was still the Cygnus spacecraft, and now they're having a different issue. So they were able to get it into space, but it's docking with the ISS is being delayed. In a blog post, NASA announced that two orbit raising burns of the spacecraft's main engine stopped earlier than planned. The agency didn't share how much of the planned burns were able to be performed prior to the premature shutdowns. NASA also didn't indicate what might have caused the engine not to perform as expected. But this is a debut mission of the Cygnus XL. This Cygnus spacecraft is a larger version version about 5.2 feet longer and it can support about 2,600 pounds of additional cargo. Right now, Cygnus XL has more than 11,000 pounds of food, science, and supplies on board. Consumables like nitrogen, oxygen, food, and toilet parts. And it has a large number of spare parts that are required for systems. For example, the urine processor. So hopefully they are able to figure that out and I will be following that story, but I just wanted to you know, put it out there because it just makes Dragon look more and more reliable. 
And finally, Starbase is getting even more official. Starbase Texas has agreed to a $1.3 million interlocal contract with Cameron County Sheriff's Office for dedicated law enforcement, effective October 1st, 2025 through September 30th, 2030, with auto renewal in two-year increments. According to S.C. E. Robinson Jr., the deal assigns eight full-time deputies exclusively to patrol Starbase city limits, enforcing traffic laws, issuing citations, and making arrests. Starbase reimburses about $68,000 per deputy with salary and benefits and about $91,000 per patrol vehicle, excluding fuel and insurance. So now you could get a ticket from a Starbase deputy if that's something on your bucket list. So thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed these space news updates, please like the video, subscribe to Ellie in Space, and I'll see you in the next one.